I call the Subcommittee on Diversity, Inclusion, and Minority Women-Owned Business Enterprises to order. Uh, we will take up the following item for approval, and that's Action Item 1A, the approval of the minutes of June 26, 2023 meeting. I move the approval of Action Item 1A. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. One abstention. I okay. Wrote it on the committee. Okay. Motion carries. Uh, with no policy items on the agenda, I will address the information items. There are two information items on the agenda. Item information uh, 2A is the diversity programs update. Senior Vice Chancellor for, Un uh, for University Hu Human Resources and Labor Relations, uh, Chancellor Gloria, will present the item. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to start by um, actually giving you a few stats. Today's is not so much stats related, um, but I wouldn't want to miss giving a little bit on our faculty hiring initiative, um, particularly since we are in phase two. And um, as you can see, we have 265 new hires from the academic year in 2022 to 2023. <coughs> And so far, um, we've got 251 in academic year 2023 to 2024, so 516 total educators to date. And as you can see, there's 382 will teach at the senior, graduate, and professional schools, and 54% of them identify as women, and 50% people of color. So there'll be a lot more slice and dicing of the stats on this to come, um, but I just thought that it would be a good um, opening piece of information um, for our update tonight. Please stop me if there are any questions along the way. Okay, this is our uh, faculty fellowship publication program and uh, this is our final report um, every year we have a uh, cohort and uh, this year we actually also celebrated the 25th anniversary of the program um, it's considered both a diversity based and a retention uh, based program and uh, it is run out of university HR but um, we are great support from the chancellor and from provost as well and um, they um, also attended the 25th anniversary celebration this year which was a really great and uplifting event and we actually had the founder come and um, attend as well so this is a really uh, it's a mentoring program essentially um, and it's been a very successful one many of the people who go through the program go on to be uh, successful writers educators etc so it's a program we're very proud of and we've been able to keep it going um, for uh, 25 years, despite COVID and every other thing that might get in the way. Um, and we did have uh, 47 fellows went through the program uh, this time, and it lasts a full academic year. Okay, I want to run through a series that we have put together um, as part of the Chancellor's Campus Climate Initiative. Um, I mentioned in the past the planning of it, and now I just want to bring you up to date on what's happened so far. Um, we're calling it the Diversity Dialogues. They are open to the entire university. Um, the first one since we last met um, ran in April, and this is the Gender-Based um, Violence Resources, and um, we kicked it off um, in April, which is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and we honored the resiliency and healing of survivors while highlighting this very important issue. Um, some of you may know this is an issue that uh, the governor's office in New York State in general is taking very seriously. Um, and uh, we had an excellent panel which discussed a number of different very specific actions to combat gender-based violence, including ways to support victims and, and survivors of gender-based violence. Assistance. <laughs> uh, 
Um, in June, we actually um, had two. And uh, the first one had to do with um, disability. And this is an all too often overlooked area of discrimination. So uh, this one presented a unique perspective regarding disability-based discrimination, um, explanations of how disability-based discrimination manifests in the workplace. And we also discussed the significant value that disability-based hiring practices can have on an organization such as CUNY and why, as a community, we should focus on making the workplace inclusive to those with disabilities. Uh, perhaps one of the only good things that came out of COVID is that uh, the workforce, um, people with disabilities in the workforce were actually able to find openings that they hadn't before because the idea of remote work was suddenly so embraced and before it had been looked at as a significant accommodation. Um, and that progress has continued. And the next one we did in June had to do with cross-campus advocacy. And um, most of the dialogues you'll see are presented by people within CUNY. Um, sometimes we have panelists that join us, but we try very much to tap the talent and the knowledge that we have within CUNY and across the university because it is abundant. Um, and people are usually very happy um, to participate. So in this particular case, um, it featured a moderated panel presentation with cross-campus advocacy through the university, LGBTQ council, and wellness centers, um, which have made significant recent improvements to address the needs of transgender and gender non-conforming individuals within our own CUNY system. And topics that were discussed were current status of gender identification at CUNY, mental health support, engagement, trainings, access to gender neutral facilities, and other cross-campus advocacy that offers a useful roadmap forward for the larger CUNY community. For each of the slides, I'm just presenting to you the people that were there for your interest. And just today, actually, um, we had uh, this particular diversity dialogue, another area of um, category or protected category that is often overlooked are veterans. Um, and here in New York City, it's particularly uh, difficult because the percentage of veterans in the city are lower than they are throughout the state, mostly because of the, um, the high cost of living um, here in New York City. And so this was a placeholder. We actually ended up with a conference panel of um, four people, um, three from within CUNY, uh, Director of Veterans Affairs, um, a coordinator for inclusion at the CUNY's Office of Veterans Affairs, and director for the PROVE project, which is the project for return and opportunity in veterans education. And we also had the assistant commissioner for policy and strategic partnerships at New York City Department of Veterans Services. So very lively discussion. Um, several of the panel members are veterans themselves. And we discussed access and barriers to success in post-deployment education and employment and biases and misconceptions that veterans still face today in both education and employment. Um, coming up in October, this will actually be, a, I think, a special sort of event. Um, it's in honor of Hispanic History Month. It will not be a panel or a speaker. It will actually be um, a live performance-based event, and it will uh, feature Dr. Javier Avila, a professor of English as well as a poet, novel, novelist, and public speaker. He writes in both English and Spanish, and his work has earned him numerous awards, including his most recent honor as the recipient of the Cultural Arts Award given by the American Association of Hispanics in Higher Ed. Um, and essentially, um, he uses humor and all sorts of performing aspects into his one-person show, um, poetry, comedy, uh, to celebrate the American, Latino, or Latinx experience. So we're really looking forward to that. It will be a fully live performance event and coming up October 26th. Some other things we have on tap from a program perspective for diversity is uh, we do have an annual professional development conference. But this year it will focus on bridging the growing divide and working towards inclusivity and consensus. Um, it will run um, virtually, so hybrid actually I should say, live and virtually November 9th through 10th. Uh, last year we had about over 80 sessions, so it is a program that is growing each year um, that we have it. 
And um, I think the participation this year should certainly outdo um, last year, um, particularly because I think the topic has been very, very well received. Another thing that we um, have been working on is a partnership with the New York City Commission on Human Rights. Um, we have partnered with them to present specific workshops um, for CUNY. And um, some of these are in person and some of them are virtual. Um, the first one is uh, Human Rights Law and Protections in Employment. And uh, that was already presented twice. And we will be firming up dates for November sessions, probably two for understanding Jewish experiences and anti-Semitism. And we have human rights law, anti-black racism, and other forms of discrimination coming up in December. And then you'll see we have two others that are on demand. So anytime somebody wants to view it, we've added it to our library, disability awareness and etiquette, and LGBTQ, the power of inclusion. So I, what I like about this <coughs> is that it's, this is an ongoing partnership. And um, New York City Commission on Human Rights obviously has a tremendous amount of resources. Um, so their library um, is a particular interest to us. And, um, and it's free. And free is always good, um, especially when it's a quality product, which I think it will be. And the last thing I want to share with you is actually a CUNY-wide initiative, um, the DEI Hub. Um, this uh, went live in June with both campus-based and CUNY-wide content. Um, University HR supported CUNY's Office of Transformation, as did many others, in the development of the new hub. And I think what's great about it, it is that it is multi-purpose, uh, lots of resources, events, policies. It's also how to report a complaint of discrimination or retaliation. It's also how to report sexual misconduct, because those are two different paths. Um, and it is a live, um, living site. And by that, I mean that it is updated on a very regular basis. And that is usually, if you've ever put together a site with resources, that's the biggest challenge, is keeping them fresh and keeping them going. And it puts everything in one place, both CUNY and for our campuses as well. Um, that is what I wanted to share with you today from a program perspective. Um, next time we get together, we'll probably be able to look, uh, start looking again at more statistics. We usually pull our numbers <coughs> in November um, and have them to report on somewhat shortly thereafter. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any questions? Or thank you. Oh, gonna have to get okay. Uh, therefore, we're going to move on to information item 2B the MWBE and SDVOB programs uh, update. Uh, Chief Procurement and Supplier Diversity Officer uh, uh, Martin Sterler will make a presentation on this item. Thank you, Trustee Wilkin. So after uh, discussing with, uh, uh, with Trustee Wilkin and some other members of the subcommittee, um, we wanted to provide an update or maybe a recap and highlights of uh, what was the uh, MWB uh, conference that was held uh, back in May. Um, I think it was it is important to reflect on it because the last one was in 2019, so it took four years for us to get you know back together face to face, and, and especially you know considering that everything that went through uh, the vendor community. So uh, I think that um, it was a successful one. Uh, humbly speaking, uh, there's things to correct. But um, all in all, I wanted to provide some, some overview and then some goals over some numbers. Uh, the format, again, was uh, held at John Jay College of Criminal Justice on May 24th. Uh, we started off with, uh, with a nice VIP uh, breakfast uh, hosted by uh, uh, President Carol Mason. We did uh, went into a plenary session in a beautiful theater. Um, it was well attended. Uh, we had a, a, a impeccable line of, uh, of, of keynote, keynote speakers. We had uh, chair of uh, the subcommittee, uh, Trustee Wilkin. We had uh, chair of the board, Bill Thompson, EVC Batista, our chancellor, of course. Uh, um, Hope Knight was there, the CEO of, of uh, ESD. Assembly member Radnice Bishop Hermelin, uh, she honored us with her visit, came from all the way from Albany. Uh, Michael Gardner, New York City Chief of um, uh, Small Business uh, Diversity Business. 
and we were honored with uh, uh, Eric uh, Mayor um, Mayor Eric Adams' attendance and, and speech. It was really, really an impressive lineup of, uh, of people that joined us in uh, in our event. The next session was, uh, or section rather, uh, we had six uh, panels and, and workshops that were the result of a focus group that we did in the uh, preparation <coughs> stage. We purposely didn't want to assume or, or guess what the vendors wanted to see or not see. We did a, a, a focus group with 20 companies, 10 on the uh, construction business and the other 10 on, on various sectors. And they, we all collectively came up with these uh, six uh, panels that were uh, very, very uh, interesting. Uh, of course, export opportunities with uh, on the construction side, and DASNI, and of course CUNY, uh, how to prepare winning responses to solicitations. There was one around, especially IT. These days we are uh, heavily investing in, in infrastructure, so there's a lot of IT projects going on. And so this is, was a well-attended um, uh, session. Um, we did have an SDBOB uh, procurement town hall, which uh, we can't do enough for uh, the SDBOB uh, community. So this is something that we really wanted to, to address uh, and give the importance that, that he, um, they deserve. And then we had a, um, a very um, intense, I would say, educational uh, session with the Chambers of Commerce and, and various uh, regional uh, uh, associations that Trustee Kim helped moderate and uh, did a phenomenal job along with uh, uh, Trustee Myra Linares um, with all the you know wisdom and insights and do's and don'ts and, and uh, they share resources that vendors there was a, a awful lot of questions and, and it, was, it was a good good uh, you know, a vivid discussion, uh, financing options, things of that nature. So um, the last part was, to me, was one of the, the highlights of the entire conference was the one, uh, one on one pitch, uh, business pitching with when the vendors, they would have to sign up in advance and they would give, uh, we would give them 10 minutes of uh, for them to pitch their, their company, their products or services or both and get their undivided attention of, of, of procurement directors from all of the colleges and, of course, central office. That was uh, uh, really, really well received by the vendor community. In terms of numbers, we had uh, over 800 attendees, which was very close to the numbers I understand we had in the past. That's considering that this is the first one in, in so many years. I think it's uh, we all sh should feel good about this. We had over 60 exhibitor uh, tables. We had agencies like NYPD, Port Authority, uh, New York City School Construction Authority. We had MTA, um, um, Chamber of Commerce like Long Island African American Chamber of Commerce, Regional Alliance for Small Contractors, and then private companies to the tune of, uh, we had Granger, we had Goldman Sachs, uh, we had Nagaro, Edge Electronics, uh, and then we have a, a very healthy list of uh, uh, companies in the in the construction industry. We had like up, almost 20 tables were construction related uh, companies. So that was uh, um, very very um, interesting to see. Um, so since the picture. Uh, it's worth the south and worse. Uh, um, I wanted to share some pictures which they don't really do justice, justice to the, the, the energy and the enthusiasm that we felt throughout the, the conference. But uh, I think it's, uh, it's good for us to reflect and, and see what, what it looked like. Uh, I think we, there are certain things that we should be proud of and, and there's other things that we need to adjust. And you know, we learn, we can, we can only get better. And, and I think that, um, you know, next year is going to be even uh, even better. I'm going to pause here and see if uh, the subcommittee has any questions, comments, recommendations. Um. No, but I do. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, so the event was very good. 
it was excellent. So thank you for organizing that. Are we asking questions on the breakdown yet? The city breakdown, or is that after this? After. After. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll hold that. I wanted to make a pause before switching uh, to a different subject. So uh, yeah, this is uh, this is actually after this slide. Um, given the MWBE community in New York and the feedback, um, this is a group that very often gives, they're very direct uh, about their uh, concerns and challenges. Uh, and I have to say that they were really appreciative, but more, it was a, a program that they felt was worth their time. Uh, to come to and know that that these uh, conferences are very important and key because it's it's a way for the minority and women uh, typically small businesses and especially the SDVLBs really to get to meet uh, with the various government agencies and uh, to hear their uh, points of view, but more in terms of getting to know who at CUNY uh, has uh, to have that discussion with. And I do have to say it, it was an honor to have Trustee Kim, uh, Commissioner of SBS, and Myra Lenoris, Trustee Lenoris, at the, um, the panel for the chambers. They, it was something that wasn't often done, where the chambers and the associations uh, get to meet together and really discuss the um, on-the-ground issues. And the, the uh, uh, trustee, Kim, really moderated a great panel. And the team that was here doing all the work was uh, very... Uh, uh, the everyday work that it takes to do a program like this, but especially uh, our vice chancellor, Hector Batista, who kept things moving, and knowing that also vice chancellor Mohammed Altala was there, it um, just meant that we, the level of the experience truly was captured there. So I just appreciate everyone that was here, Ali Banks, uh, supply of diversity, uh, who also had a role in it. So everyone brought what they needed to make sure that the program was a success. So can't wait for the next program. That's, you know, and conference that we will look forward to in that regard. Um, yeah, just any other questions? Or, okay, so we'll move on Thank you. to the next. Um, this is a topic that we wanted to address in response to uh, uh, a request from, or, or a comment from uh, a trustee Kim that was kind enough to share information on, on the city side uh, about a disparity in the disparity study. Um, so we tried to, to gather information in, in a rather similar fashion than, than the city did to see what, you know, what the numbers would look like uh, from the state side. And it's essentially a, a breakdown of, of the subcategories that comprise the, the whole MWB uh, universe. So much like the, uh, this is separate between CUNY and then all of the issues, you have capital projects and the reason for that is uh, you know, the, the nature of, of these two uh, groups are have uh, substantial differences, so the numbers may, may look different. So by combining them, uh, we would probably miss uh, the information that it's uh, this providing. And so um, the numbers reveal, the, the look, the, the, my, my first thought, and then I, I will let uh, the subcommittee uh, comment on it. Um, I think that they look fairly similar. That doesn't mean that they look good, but they look fairly similar to what, what happens in, on, on the city side. Um, of course, 
the women business enterprise is within the ethnicity. Of course, it's not an ethnicity, but that's the way you know the state categorizes. So uh, on the CUNY side, uh, the women uh, uh, business enterprise participation dropped from 70 percent a couple of years ago. We're now we're tracking uh, just over 50 percent. Um, Asian American and African American, uh, it's growing. Um, Hispanic, it's hovering around uh, 25%. Uh, and on the CUCF side, um, it's even interesting. The Asian American has a vast majority of, of all the categories, uh, followed by women business enterprises. And then uh, Hispanic American is lower than the CUNY side. Uh, and African American is more or less similar to CUNY. In terms of in the industry breakdown, uh, this is the, the the four categories that the state requires for uh, for us to report, and so uh, naturally, in our case in, in CUNY, uh, we went from a 70-30 in 2022 to a more or less 50-50. And the reason for that is uh, during the, the pandemic years, there was not a lot of uh, investment in infrastructure for natural reasons, and, and that spend was shifted over to. Uh, coming out of the pandemic. Now we're going back to, I would say, normal times where there's you know, a, a huge component of, of services, including software as a service, which is a big investment. Uh, and naturally, on the construction side, you'll see that mm -hmm. it, that's pretty stable over time. About 80 to 85 percent is construction, pure construction, and then about 9 to 13, 14 percent is construction consultants. Um, so that's the, the, the picture uh, of the last two fiscal year or, and where we are or how we're trending in the first quarter of this fiscal year. Just a reminder, the state fiscal year starts in, uh, in April, and so our, it's a quarter uh, before uh, our fiscal year. So, but um, I'll pause here. Uh, Trustee Gilman, I don't know if you have any uh, comments. Yes. Uh First of all, thank you for breaking this down. It's going to be really helpful for us to keep looking forward. Uh, I just back on the fair. So again, it was an excellent program. I think Trustee and Chair Wilkin, um, you know, thank you for your leadership on that. Uh, everybody gave such positive response, like you said. I, I will say that October 2nd, the New York City, we're having our annual procurement fair at the Barclay Center. and. Mm -hmm. I know CUNY's participating, but it would be helpful, if possible, to, for CUNY to also blast that out to all the vendors that came here to of get course. more word out. And it's just helping all the businesses to get a, another bite at the apple. And we have over 80 agencies, including CUNY, represented there. So that would be, um, I think, uh, a win-win for everybody. As to the numbers, I just have a question, because if you say that these numbers, let's say, however, whichever fiscal year you pick, they add up to 100 percent. But if you say that WBE is 71 percent in fiscal year 22, then are you saying that the Hispanic American, Asian American, African American numbers here are just representing men? That's what I was going to ask, too. Because if it's women and men, then you're double counting on the WBE side. It is possible, yeah. but, but there's no distinction in, in the reporting side. It's Again, the state provide that category is women owned business or minority. You could be a women and my minority, and but it's not double counting. Oh, actually, you only get counted as a woman if you have if you're a black woman. You only get counted as a yeah, woman. Yeah, that's right. These so yeah, is the way that is that I right? that's so the way could, that's that the means only that way the that women math could be works. more. Right. So right, but then that's not you're not. You're not properly so reflecting the Hispanic right. American population that's actually getting contracts because you have to pull Correct. out the women and add it to the men who are also getting it. I'm pretty sure you're double counting here because I wouldn't say that, you know. No, you're actually thirty percent. You're, you're under undercounting. You're undercounting on race. Right. On race. You're undercounting on on because well, if. Wait a but this because is, this, this, those numbers, yeah, the columns is, add up to 100 kind of percent, right, which right, makes no right, sense. Right. Yeah. Right. So if you've got the 70 percent of MBE has white women, Hispanic women, Asian women, African women, and Native American women. That's right. 
in that category. So you are by definition undercounting how many Hispanic American people <laughs> there are, or how many black people So, so that, there that, are. you're raising a very good point, and uh, we noticed the same as well. Uh, this is coming directly from ESD, and it, it's pulled directly out of, of the system, so there's no really any manipulation of any kind. But given that they have the source of the information, what what we will do is Just we'll special request. We'll go back to them and say if we can you have you to know, modify the reporting to WBE. so we make yeah. sure that we see a a, a, I, a more yeah. I would say uh, like, proper reflection. Well, I, I would venture to say, and I we're in a we're in a public setting that there's a reason why this is being done that way, right? And we we have to get to the bottom. We should request it and see. But there's got to be a reason why, right? Because I, I am assuming that question has been asked by somebody before us, right? So we, we, should, we should figure that out. But uh, we could definitely get that data. I mean, one of the challenges that we have as a system is that we'll, we're not allowed to give a lot of information. Like what we're doing now, we're not allowed to give out in a, in a public setting. We're, we're, it, it's, it's, it is um, the state prohibit us from doing that into the, into, into the, into the governor announces. Right, but because the board requested this, you know, we answered to the board, we, we went and got the information. But I, it, it has been, it, it is it is a challenge. I think, I think, but I think it's a point well taken. We'll, we'll go back and ask yeah. the question. Mm -hmm. So to clarify a, a few things that um, one, there are there are um, a state New York State. Uh, make sure that the information that is given out is given out to everyone. So if they are doing a disparity study, which often this information comes from, and there will be one coming up uh, with New York State, they will make sure that the information is consistent with their study and accurate. Uh, what happens sometimes uh, is, depending on the timeline with which uh, the information is given out, it could look uh, a bit different. Uh, often WBEs by, fed and I could be wrong, so please correct me, uh, federal um, definition is Caucasian women. New York State several years ago felt that, and, and rightly so, um, that women should not just be Caucasian women, and we've had that discussion. So depending on where that came from, and I think we need to, so, and it's okay. good we have an open, okay. transparent conversation with the committee, that, that is we're going to go in to, to look at that. That's number one. What we do see here is clearly the need to make sure that the programs, as in CUNY, as in the state, and executive orders from Mayor Adams, is that we need to do a better job. We need to do where we are looking to make sure that, that the population who are doing business in the population who are um, live in New York is consistent with procurement. And that's not necessarily an easy task, but that's the level of standard that that is needed here. I, in terms of the numbers, perhaps what we'll do is define them, you know, so that it's clearer in terms in terms of what what we need to do, but uh, that is uh, for sure a a need for New York and New York sets standard and and what the models look like for the rest of the country. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think one one thing that I want to just uh, to get back to Trustee Kim's uh, point and um, I think we should start with last year's numbers. Right, because those numbers have been reported, and get a ask them a lot of questions about because I, I don't want to create a situation. So that way, 
this committee has a sense. Because if we look at last year's numbers, we should be able to tell us, it'll tell us a story, right? And there won't be, it should be, it won't be that far off. So why don't we try to get last year's numbers mm -hmm. and then do an, yeah. and come back to the committee, sure. present those numbers, and then we could then figure out how to, for us to try to create something internally to be able to more reflect oh, to, the, to the committee. And what? yeah, and New York State publishes the numbers, uh, give every agency, correct, um, uh, uh, that is under uh, the uh, 15A, every agency in terms of the minority women business legislation must um, produce that information. What was helpful here as we continue uh, this p committee, which is still in its early um, uh, stages, is that we're now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, trying to do it more on electronic basis, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. And bringing in some new, Technology. so we'll, we'll be much more uh, aware uh, uh, and uh, and definitive and making sure that whatever we have will be consistent in terms of uh, what information we're giving out. But it's what we have is consistent with New York State and, uh, you know, in terms of the measures that they go through. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll take that action and uh, we'll report back once we, we get the uh, their accurate breakdown. Um, can, can yes. Uh, another thing missing here to speak to Trustee Wilkins' point is there's no indication of percentage. So if the number of MWBE ownerships doubled, then that, that would say that the women uh, WBE stayed flat, whereas others grew, whereas if it halved, then the women ownership would have dived. And so it's really unclear what this says without a, a total count or a count of non-NWBE as a percentage as well. What, what it shows, yeah, that's a good point. Um, what this shows is, is merely a, a, a share of each one of the, of the uh, subgroups within the MWBE and what that trends look like, whether it's going up, down, or, or, or staying flat. Uh, there's, of course, several different ways to measure it. We just wanted to, you know, uh, put a stake on the ground and, and come up with something that at least is fairly similar to the way that the city uh, did their study, but we don't necessarily have to follow the same format. If this doesn't really, if this, this committee feels that this doesn't really tell a story, then we can certainly modify and or try to find different ways to analyze information. We, I think we're all trying to get to the same thing, trying to see where the disparities reside and try to address it. So any, any recommendation, we'll have to, to explore it. Just to give an analogy, this is like fighting over scraps of the same pie, but actually the pie may have grown, and it misses that completely. So I, I'd, I'd suggest incorporating it. And and, and, that's easy. Yeah, yeah that's easy. And, and that, that is true. I mean, so one of the things that we, that we have done since the chancellor came on board is, and, and a mandate by the board, right, through the chair and then the vice chair, was increase the the pie to try to unbundle. So now we have an investment firm that is a minority. You know, we have all these different things that are, right, that, are, that we're doing and a lot more. And I think that that, to your point, is increasing the pie because in the past, those were areas that we didn't touch. We were, you know, and, and frankly, the board has mandated us, yeah, you have to look at those areas. So um, we, we should, the next meeting, I think those are yes. valid points and we should definitely, uh, um, I, I think what would be helpful, you know, and I don't know how you do this. Uh, I don't know if I'm breaking a board, a board rule. But what would be helpful is that if we could get you guys to give you give us your thoughts on this, um, uh, you know, just send it, send it and see, see me on it, right? And so then we could begin to really internally uh, sort of uh, get these numbers to a, to a point where it sort of makes sense. Um, I'm not the chair, so I can't acknowledge this. Oh, no, no, I'm just, I'm um, just yeah. Right um, so uh, you know, to make sure that um, that uh, we get to to the points that um, you guys are raising, which are very, very good points. So. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank sure. you. By all means. Um, there, I think there are just three main points we can email you, but I think that three main points. One, this the total sum. If you don't have that, it's not so you. helpful. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll, we'll include that. So total yeah. sum. And then I just looked up just to check, you know, how you get certified, and they're separate. In the so maybe New York State has been doing this wrong a long time. I would, it's not the first time <laughs> we've found something like this. So I think that the fact that you can be certified as a woman only, like that's, and then it has all the information versus ethnically, and that's their list right there. I think that is, uh, that those are the main two points. I don't think any, because to me, the numbers is a separate issue, sharing the numbers. We're not talking about the numbers right here. We're just talking about how like those values are constructed. And I think the next step is discussing the numbers and the trends, but if they're not constructed correctly, like as you said, either double undercounting or double counting, because there are some businesses who probably sign up for both because they can, in which case they're not being undercounted, they're being counted twice in there. Because when I search us now to see, you can search for a business by looking up Woman owned, and then you get there, and I bet some of them are by African American women. So I think that there's the potential of what yes, I uh, just to uh, yeah. define this point. It's uh, very specific as to how the um, uh, the categories are yep. are created. I, you know, I'm sure Trustee Kim knows this uh, very well, among others that are here, and. The reason for the categories, and it's interesting that you know you bring that up. The reason for the categories is based on what is required right. to do a disparity study, right. and every three years or so, uh, between three and five, uh, both New York uh, State. And all of the cities in New York are required to do mm -hmm. disparity studies. Um, to and and as a result of that, that pretty much um, transcends where the emphasis should be mm -hmm. from the various agencies mm -hmm. to make sure that they do what's necessary mm -hmm. to to within procurement. As far as reaching uh, reaching goals, mm -hmm. I know prior to this we showed a little bit more of the highlights of the um, capital uh, <coughs> procurement and how that's done. But you know, this is this is real stuff. Ninety five percent, and I keep that in my my. I always mention it in my mind. Ninety five percent of all businesses in New York are considered small businesses. So we need to make sure that that we do as much as we can in uh, at CUNY and our partners mm -hmm. uh, among uh, the city and in the state in in terms of any information that we provide here too in that regard. And of course, what we're also encouraging is uh, having students become entrepreneurs, and we had our wonderful uh, trustee chair, Salama Tudumbaya, who was also there making sure that students were looking at bu becoming business owners. So very, very, very glad you were there too at the, at the uh, conference. Great. So uh, this is the main uh, part of, uh, of the update. Uh, on the program, there's a few slides uh, on the construction side. I'm not sure if you want to uh, yeah, go over that. Have, do, how's our time with things? We're it's 6:30. It, it's up to you. I mean, I just think on successes, or I think we've scrolled through it. All right, we're going <laughs> to scroll okay, through, them, through. But um, if just and we want to keep to yep. then you can <coughs> the, uh, that one. Yep. So um, thank you, um, Chair. Um, with um, um, at the very request, we um, our team uh, looked at uh, some of our uh, success. We call it success stories. Some uh, samples and examples of the utilization um, 
of uh, minority vendors in, in our work, and we wanted to share that uh, with you uh, briefly. So the uh, first example here is uh, Otavino Corporation, uh, which is a, a, a WBE uh, organization. They worked with us on the Baruch uh, College project in 17 lakhs. Uh, it's a, a stone restoration firm. Uh, their utilization during this project was about 1.3 uh, million dollars, and uh, their uh, work and performance have um, was really satisfactory and helpful in uh, keeping uh, the project uh, on time. And they did demonstrate flexibility uh, to meet the project uh, critical uh, path. Uh, ATEC Electrical uh, Enterprises, another. Uh, minority uh, organization uh, worked at uh, College of Staten Island with various fire alarm pieces, and uh, the utilization was about 3.8 uh, million there, and uh, they did uh, contribute to keeping the project uh, on time. Uh, the Island Fire, uh, uh, same idea, electrical and fire alarm contractors uh, working uh, worked on a, a Queens College uh, similar. Uh, project to the uh, Staten Island uh, project. Utilization was about $1.4 million. Um, Multiphase Electrical uh, is another uh, uh, WBE firm uh, that uh, worked with us in the uh, New York City College of Technology uh, in the NAM uh, whole cooling system. Uh, their utilization was uh, moderate uh, somehow, but uh, they also uh, contributed uh, to the work. Uh, the same firm worked also on Baruch College on uh, another project that also uh, was a good contribution to the project. Uh, and thirdly, uh, also on the Bronx campus-wide uh, project. So this firm <coughs> works while it's a small contribution, but uh, is being utilized uh, in more than one uh, project. ACS System Associates, uh, it's an MPE uh, firm, uh, working on the Brooklyn College uh, West Quad. Uh, it's a trade uh, company on HVC, uh, and the work was about 2.5 million, and they did miscellaneous mechanical work in this project. Um, PP Contracting Corporation, uh, also at uh, Queens College, um, and uh, it's a masonry work about $2 million worth of work, and uh, their coordination and supervision uh, particularly uh, was great to coordinate the different facets of the project. Uh, international Asbestos Removal, uh, it's a WBA firm, uh, worked at Baruch College uh, for a value of about a million dollar, and uh, their work was uh, good, performance is great. Uh, they were subconsultant, demonstrated flexibility to meet the deadline. Uh, Kurtz uh, Architects, WBE firm, um, and also did work with us in administering the work and uh, leading it on a path of uh, success, uh, successful completion. And uh, also an architecture firm, also an MBE firm at uh, Razan Hall in Queens College, um, also contributed to the uh, success of the work. And I believe that was the uh, last slide. Yeah. So, Thank you. Uh, that'll continue, and, and, and know that uh, that uh, CUNY for MWBEs are open for business. Any questions or for the discussion? Okay. With no more items on the agenda, I move to adjourn this meeting. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. And opposed? Uh, all right. Have a good evening. Thank you.